it to it, Dad. Show it who's boss. Come on. Come on, Johnny. Yeah. I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, aka Harry the Spastic. Today I'm joined by Terry from London, the latest addition to the Porky's Corner pound for pound list for November for helmets. You came in at number seven, Terry. Mate, I was fuming. I'll tell you this now, I thought, like, you know when you told me how many votes I was getting, I was like, I've got to make the top five. There's no way I'm not making top five, man. You mean that your audience calls themselves hardcore and I end up at number seven? That's embarrassing. They, they, they have to do better next time, Porks. I thought you might be an angry Terry with being known as a helmet. Never. Never, man. I, I can't let the nerds influence my mood. You know that, Russ. You know what I mean? I can't. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but but go back to that video we did, Russ. What's the first thing I said to you? I said, I bet I end up in Bellevue of the Week or Helmets. Didn't I say that to you? Bellevue of the Week. You always get a quote on boxing asylum. So I usually, when I, on a Monday morning when I go to office, I usually put asylum on and I go through all life chat and I read it on a Monday and you always get loads of, uh, there's always loads of Terry banter and Porky banter. And, not so much this weekend, but there usually is. No, but you know what? Here's the thing I'll say, Russ. Yeah. I don't mind if it's if it's boxing chat. I don't mind. So if so, like if I say something like I think Okoli will beat Usyk, and people go, "Ah, oh, what kind of idiot is this?" I don't even get upset about that because that's what that's the bit of boxing that's actually quite fun. You know the bit I don't like, Russ. There was a guy in your comments when we did our video. Uh, was it Stephen Foster? And he said something like. Terry only likes black fighters. He doesn't seem to like white fighters. I think there's something suspicious there. You know, the guy was trying to insinuate that I'm racist, which at first I was angry, Russ. And then I realized how stupid this guy is. Because if you think about what we're doing right now, right? You got Russell Hartley, the king of South Yorkshire. Yeah. You know, a man who's a man who gets really bad acne if he steps up the South Riding of Yorkshire. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's true. I mean, as soon as, soon as you got to leave Yorkshire, mate, you're a wreck. And then you've got me, London-born Zimbabwean raised. Like, on what basis could you watch a video that you and I do and go, yeah, either one of those guys must be racist? And then you look at the cast of characters you get on your own channel. I'm like, this mm -hmm. Stephen Foster's an idiot. And the sad thing is, guys like him just suck the oxygen out of what we're trying to do. So, look, I'll put it out there now. If that guy can just fuck off, don't subscribe to the channel. You fuck off, Stephen Foster. I'll pay whatever you're paying to Porky just so you don't ever watch his videos again. Because that's embarrassing what you said in the comments. And that goes for anyone else that wants to, to step over that line and Why move away from boxing. Is he a member, Terry, on my channel? Because like? they'll have a little... No, 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 no idea if he's a member. I, I didn't check. But if he is, he can fuck off. And I'll pay whatever he was paying just for the fact that he can get lost. Because I, I took offense at that. Where we're just trying to do a boxing thing here. Good-natured, funny, controversial sometimes. You know, don't take it to places it doesn't need to go. Some people can be ignorant. I'm a bit ignorant sometimes. I mean, everything nowadays, though, can be deemed as... It can be turned into a, a race argument, though, can't it? So we have to be careful in what we're saying. But, yeah, but, Russ, like, I don't even think you and I have ever existed in that space, if you see what I mean. Yeah. I mean, and not even that we actively try and avoid it. It's like it's not that important to us. Like we're we're here for the boxing. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes though, right? For example, I'll choose my words carefully. Spencer Fearing can back a lot of black fighters and not white, and he gets a bit of jit for that, doesn't he? Sometimes. Yeah, and I'm like, why? Because let, let's be honest, Russ, name your favorite 100 meter sprinters. Oh, Carl Lewis. Uh, I don't know, Carl Lewis, Calvin Smith, Ben Johnson. I liked him. So. Oh, fucking hell, Russ. Where's all the white guys in that? You Where's Alan Wells? Where Alan Whipper oh. Wells? 
Oh, you picked the talking one. You fucking racist. You fucking racist. <laughs> no. But you see what I mean? It's it's hard to pick certain things. It's just hard to to be diverse. Like pick your favorite classical musicians. It's going to be hard to find a black guy in there. Just being real. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I dig out a white boxer, nobody says a word. I dig out a traveller. Russ, what have you got wrong against travellers? Well, I'm talking about Billy Joe. I think he quit. Yeah, but you're having a go at him because he's a traveller. No, you fought Canelo and I thought he quit. Yeah. But Why are people so sensitive? Travelers. Yeah, I don't know, mate. It's a, we live in a snowflake generation, don't we? You know, well, well, just keyboard snowflakes, man. Like, you know what I mean? Stephen Foster, my challenge to you is prove to me you're not a racist. Please, I'll wait. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on from uh, Stephen Foster. Why? Well, Why? Well, you want to talk about out, do you, pal? Can I just say, it's not Stephen Foster, there was a matter of boxer from Manchester. It's probably somebody else pretending to him. I don't know. Uh, yeah. so, no. what, what do you think to me top, Terry? It's, uh... Mate, show them the sleeves. No, no, show them the sleeves, Porky. Oh. <laughs> Check it to me tailor. 50 odd quid it'll be, because it's going to be all this down here, then these. And then the length of it. Come on. Wait, you know, if, okay. if you cut the sneeze properly, Russ, you can get some jogging bottoms out of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, do you know who got me there? So my friend from Kent who's got the McLaren. He got yeah. sent me it. And uh, I, think, I think you got wrong size, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, I'm going to get it altered before I see Do you know what it is? He saw the old photos. Saw the old photos of his <laughs> Porky's XXXL. What the hell? But so I, what I do when I can't find my dressing and I wear it, but it says, where's the B sample? Mate, I remember I told you the B sample came back positive, man. <laughs> there is no more B sample. But it keeps me warm. Right, so we've spoke about you being a helmet, Terry, so you're all right with that then, yeah? Hey, listen, I still want to get to number one, but I need to find the right sort of quote to get me there. I don't think I'm I'm ready today, but I'm going to get to number one at some point. Okay, uh, we spoke about that. Uh, we'll cross that out. Uh, right, other topics. One that's been gnawing at me, and you've probably seen my video that's called Raging. And uh, <laughs> I've, I've had more emails from that. I, I swore all the way through it, and it's not really good that. And I've been for a lot of trouble tomorrow when I go to the office, but. I just had to get out of my system. And then I did one with Julian McGowan, you know, Gabby Sykes was trainer, and I never swore one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a bit on fury, aren't I, Jekyll and I? But I, it's gnawing at me, this. I want to start straight off with Bradley Skeet. What what happened, Terry? Um, can I give you my honest take on it? Yeah. I think Hamza Shiraz was frustrated, right? because I don't think he's expecting that version of Bradley Skeet to show up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Hamza Shiraz has been doing in America, but clearly whatever it is didn't translate on fight night. And you can see him frustrated. So I think as soon as he managed to get Skeet going, all of that frustration boiled over, and it boiled over into anger. And I'm not saying what he did was right. I'm just saying that I've seen it happen before. It happens a lot in gyms. When, especially when two people have real needle with each other, a few extra will go when the guy's on his knees. Yeah. And it's the ref's job. To be honest, if someone says to me, Hamza Shira should have been disqualified, they're 100% right. The referee is the guy that got it wrong. I don't think Hamza Shira did anything out of the ordinary for a boxer. A lot of guys have hit guys when they were down. Tyson's done it. Uh, Tyson's really done it. Um, remember Dillian and Joshua after the bell? Anthony Fowler... Seem to get a reputation for doing Ella, it. Abraham, Roy Jones, uh, yeah. Montel Griffin. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, it happens. You, you know, it's once you start hitting someone, the instinct to stop is quite hard. Like, think think about this. Like the same night, who was it they pulled up on that BT show for not going for the kill? Was it Carol Talma? And David Hay was like, as soon as he had him going, he I would have thrown four extra shots. Right? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, Hamza Shiraz had Bradley Skeet going and threw about five extra shots in there. So it's it swings and roundabouts. Like, you want these guys to be killers in the ring, 
and sometimes it boils over. That doesn't mean that what Shiraz did was right. It's one of those, in Formula One, they call them racing, racing incidents, don't they? And that's one of those kind of like a boxing incident that should have been a disqualification, but it looks like they're heading towards a rematch and hopefully those two can put it right. Do you feel that uh, Steve Gray has got to come out and say he got it wrong? Steve Gray got it wrong. The board won't let him come out and hold his hands up because that would open up a can of worms. Robert Smith will come out and just say, look, they, they've agreed to the rematch. Let's all move on. There'll be no discussion about the referee. But that was poor referee. Do you feel that Steve Gray, Steve Gray uh, tends to go at home promoter in nearly every single incident where there's a, some, some controversy? I think a lot of refs do, right? Is it? It's rare that you see the away guy get the rub of the green with referees. What's the answer then, Terry? So, I found it interesting that this Tracy, is it Tracy Crouch, was talking about getting an independent regulator for football. But football's got far fewer problems than boxing has. Let's get an independent regulator for boxing in this country, and it should just be very simple. You cannot engage in combat sport unless it's regulated by this regulator. Anything else will be considered illegal. That's where we need to start. Yeah, take it out of the take it out the board's hands because they failed, and then let's start really thinking about proper governance, proper transparency, people having to do their jobs, real anti-doping, you know, real tests, fit and proper tests for people to be involved in boxing. <clears throat> so no criminals allowed in boxing. So. You cannot be involved in boxing in any way, shape, or form. You cannot hold a license in boxing if you have a criminal conviction. Done. Oh, God, there'd be nobody, uh, nobody'd have a, a lamb in it, would they? they? Maybe that's what we need, Russ. Okay. Uh, just before we... What, 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 what did you think of Skeet, Skeet, Skeet? I thought Skeet boxed his ears off and I thought that's the best I've seen of him for a long time. I think Dean Powell will be looking down at him and I think he'll be proud. Yeah, I didn't think he had it in him. I was talking to one of his ex-amateur clubmates, my mate Dan, and I, I said, I, I said, mate, the guy's done now. He, there's nothing left in the tank. And I, I genuinely think, if I'm being honest with you, if they do rematch, if Hamza Shiraz really sticks it on him, I don't think it goes three or four rounds, to be honest with you. But I, I just think Hamza Shiraz was a bit intimidated by who he had in front of him. And you could see that in the way that he fought. He was terrible on, on Saturday night. He was absolutely terrible. I think that Dominic Ingle coming out, speaking out, made my day. Uh, some of the things Dominic Ingle said were true. And it's been going on for far too long. And you were going on about own promoters and referees signing with own promoter and all that. And I think he might get into trouble for his comments on social media and interviews and that. But well done to Dominic, in Dominic Ingle because I've never, he got a skeet performing like somebody that's easily British level, easily. And I thought he would probably area level now, skeet, a spent force, but he isn't, is he, after that performance? So my question is, how much, what, how much did Shiraz make him look good? Made him look fantastic, so maybe Shiraz isn't the real deal. Yeah, that's what I'd start to look at now and go, yeah, Hamza Shiraz needs to go back to the drawing board and go, do I really understand what this pro boxing thing's about? Like When you're doing 500 tickets, Terry, they're, still, they're, <clears throat> they're going to want to keep him undefeated, aren't they? Because they're all eating off it, aren't they? <clears throat> exactly. And that's the problem that we've got in it at the moment. You're doing that kind of tickets, and he's a massive ticket seller, and they're going to want they'll have to pad him out, won't they, to keep him on cards? But I don't think they'll yeah. go back for a skeet rematch again, do you? I think they have to, they have to for credibility at sport, don't yeah. And I think he can beat skeet. I genuinely think if he if he had just gone out, cut the ring off, and just started bombing on Bradley Skeet, I think he would have probably won comfortably. Well. I feel sorry for Bradley Smith, just as for Bradley. And I feel sorry for Flex as well, for once. But Flex has had enough on town this season. There's no two uh, swings around. <laughs> swings about, isn't it? There's no love from me. <laughs> no love from me, I'm afraid. There's no, no, sorry, there's no sympathy. But well done for what you said, Dominic. 
it's a pity other trainers don't come out and speak like that when they get shafted. So well done. Dennis McCann. I like him, Terry. I think he's very, very good. He excites me. What do you think? I like him a lot. But he the Saturday night showed that he's still young and there's a lot to learn because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you notice, I think he got to probably halfway into round four and he ran out of ideas because nothing he had done was getting the guy out there, right? And at that point there, what you want, what, what you'd want to see from someone who was ready for the world title is you actually start to create your own openings. You start to break him down. When you realize the guy's not trying to fall over, then you've got to start breaking him down. You can't keep trying to take him out with the same combinations. But he'll learn that. I, I, think, he's, I think he's super, super talented. I like the look. He, I like his look. He just looks, he looks like someone who should be generating a lot of money. I just want to make sure that the skills back it up and that he can... Because here's the thing, Russ. We, we get excited by these guys when they're fighting journeymen and people they should be. And we rush them so fast that they never really perfect their craft. So when they get to that top level, you know, they don't perform. And then, then all the fans just fall away and act like this guy never existed. So I'm always going to back Dennis because obviously he's trained by my friend Eddie Lamb and Al Smith. Uh, he, that's probably going to get me in helmets for just saying that, by the way. But that's okay. But I'd just like to see him work on his ring craft, you know, create some openings, use the face more intelligently. Sometimes just know that you don't have to take him out in two rounds. Maybe you just want to hurt him to the body for the first couple of rounds, you know, soften him up. Those, those things that just come with experience and time. But no, nah, he's, a, he's a hell of a talent, though. Yeah. Yeah, he's a hell of a, hell of a talent. And Frank's looking a bit strong for 2022, isn't he, really, now? Is he? Well, Anthony Yard. He's one. Uh, Dubois in position. Joyce are in position. Fury. But are they ready? It don't matter. They're in position, aren't they? Gonna... No, no, but it does, Russ, because Dubois was in position before. And then what happened? Well, if maybe, well, that's, well they're in position. They're number one ranked, aren't they, in the governing body? Yeah. Then he's got a strong stable. He's got that Dennis McCann. You know, he looks like he's going places at the moment, Frank. Yeah, but for me, Frank will be in a strong position when I can say for the next three years, Frank's got world title fights. Well, he's got Callum Johnson in a world title fight next month. That's one on board. He's mm -hmm. than 22. That's a good start, isn't it? He's got yeah. DeMar and Joyce are knocking on the door for the mandatories. Tyson Fury is going to defend against Dylan White. I've just been told the WBC. We've got a, a memo here from Kent. He's just texted me, you know, the hardcore's hardcore. Aye, so it is. So it is, Russell. So it is. For me, in case I missed anything. And <laughs> before me, so we'll be buzzing. Kent, you are on the ball. You're ahead of the ball, in fact. Kent he has said that the WBC have ordered Tyson Fury to fight Dylan White next. And no. Oh, no, I, th I think what they've said is you've got to start negotiations. Now, does that mean as a mandatory? I don't know because the WBC said we can't mandate the fight until the legal action has gone away. So does that mean the legal action has gone away now, the, the arbitration? Or well, maybe as if they're mandating the fight. But what I were led to believe that doesn't uh, unification or undisputed supersede any mandatories? It's at the discretion. It will always be at the discretion. You know, the WBC, they're always dead against these sort of undisputed fights, aren't they? Do you remember when Jermaine Taylor did Hopkins? The, the, the Sun split the belts up after that, didn't they? They always seem to split them up, don't they, straight away, or, or try and put a blocker in between. And... So, yeah, but if you look at it, right, the green belt's the number one belt, so the WBC don't really care about unifications. They just care about who's carrying their belt. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, then, well... Where do, you, where do you see it all ending then, this, this, this WBC? And... I think Fury will just fight Dillian White because there's no, there's no other credible dance partner for when he wants to fight in March. So why not? Get in. But it just, do you know what it has for me, Porky? It has John McDermott vibes to it. If that makes sense. So the yeah, first yeah, McDermott yeah. fight, where, where, where someone like Dillian's just going to come out and go for it, and then it's, it's a question of, can Fury handle that? Because he was all right against 
Deontay, because Deontay didn't really go for it, did he? He was kind of tentative. But if Dillian just says, I've got nothing to lose by just swinging for him, will we get another Fury versus John McDermott? Well, they're going to do it twice. Yeah. God, rematches Terry again. I can't bear it. <laughs> crazy. Uh, Isaac Lowe won at weekend. Sorry, it lost at weekend against the Mexican kid. Uh, exciting fight, though. Where does he go now, Lowe? Well, wherever Fury goes, right? I don't think that will change. Do you know, I feel for Isaac Lowe because... I do. There are bits of him that are really, really good, actually, right? But the chin's probably not where it needs to be and the power's not where it needs to be, which is kind of like a like the combination of doom for a boxer. But in, in places, he looked good, but, and he's got balls of steel, hasn't he, that Isaac Lowe? Massive Jesus. Ball. Like, you can say what you want about any other... Like, that's a heart of a lion right there. Like, wow. I'll, that's what impressed me about Isaac Lowe. It's just really has the heart of a lion. I was, I was, I was impressed with him. Yeah. And also, I also like the I also like the emotion Fury had because uh, you watched the fight, right? When the crowd were quiet, you could hear Fury screaming instructions at Isaac, and I thought, "Wow, that's when you know someone really cares." Well, he lives in the same village as him, doesn't he, in Markham? Yeah. Uh, Dillian White, if he gets the Fury fight, do you fancy him to do to upset the odds? No. 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 You think Dylan no. White missed, missed the boat now with that? He's, he's peaking, he's coming down? I think that Povetkin knockout, take, it, it took some... I just Those sorts of knockouts take something out of you. And, you know, had he got up from it and carried on fighting, would it be different? Maybe. But the fact that it just wiped him out, like you, you lose a bit of your life force when that happens. So maybe had he fought Fury when he was kind of like, you know, who he was before Povetkin won, yeah. But now with Fury on the way up the way he is and, you know, prepared to actually stand there and really try and take you out, ah, it's just going to be hard for him. And like, you know me, Terry's rule number one, show me how you're going to get past the jab. If you want me to believe in you, show me how you're going to get past the jab. And I don't see him getting past that Fury jab. Kind of like Chisora too. Mm, interesting. Uh, Eddie Hearn's come out and he said it's going to be 40 million and they'll start talking to people. Joshua did an interview and he, he were talking about no, no, no way does he ever uh, take step aside. And then the more the conversation went on, six minutes <laughs> the line he said oh for right money I will uh what where's Joshua's head at the moment and Mate, don't, don't, don't forget Joshua getting lost in the Penrose triangle as well where What's he started that? off with the oh the Penrose triangle basically it's a triangle that's impossible to complete it looks like a, a complete triangle but actually it's not and because uh, he remember he started talking about his brother's triangle where it was like oh, what was it time price quality and he couldn't even understand what that triangle was. Ended up just tripping over his tongue. And he's like, well, if they offer me some money, I've got to look at the respect. I've got to look at, am I fighting the best? And I've got to look at making a smart decision. I'm like, mate, <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. Do you feel, do you feel Terry, that... Uh... Oops, hang on a minute. Do you feel that Joshua uh, is kind of like... Pulled about all over the place because you never seem to see him on his own at any stage. He's always got somebody with him. He's not like me. I'm a bit of a loner, and, and, and I know you like your own space as well. But he always seems to have people around him, even when he's chilling out in Dubai. He's always got people with him. And do you feel that he's got a lot of people in his ear and that he's, he's he might be taking bad advice or being set up for a fall? Do you remember what we talked about before, Porks, where we said, if you really look at Joshua's team, how many boxing people are there? How many people are there with that, that real experience, you know, that, who are streetwise in boxing? How many people does he have around him who are streetwise in the sport? It's just McCracken. Yeah. 
that's the only kind of boxing mind he has close to him on a regular basis, Rob McCracken. Yeah. So you wonder if these people are in his ear, what are they telling him? Because they're not boxing people. They, they don't have that, that legacy in order to understand the sport. So what are they telling him? Yeah. They're just there for the ride, folks. You know that. They're there for the ride. And, you know, partly there, I guess, for some kind of protection as well, because he doesn't want to lose another watch, does he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel, though, that if you take step aside money and don't fight Ulsek, that his credibility will go down as a, he'll be known as a coward and also be known as greedy? Maybe by that, that Stephen Foster guy, whatever his name was, maybe him, but generally, no, I'd take the 40 million. If you offered me 40 million to sit down and do nothing, it doesn't matter what I was meant to be doing. I'm taking 40 million to sit down and I will watch. Yeah. Yeah, would you take the money, yeah? Yep. What yep. What if it were one million? No. Nah. Do you feel that if they take the step aside and it's probably something like three or four mil, do you feel and, and, and that'll be when Fury's had his fight, so they'll have to wait for it. They might get a down payment, but do you feel if they do take step aside that they might get froze out and they might never get another crack at it? No. No. Joshua will always be an important part of the heavyweight picture just because he brings so much money. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, we we'll probably got that way wrong. Yeah, it'd be hard to freeze them out, but you know what Fury Fury's are like for messing? Speaking of messers, Tommy Fury's uh, piped up and he's saying that he's got a cold and a cough and a, and a bruised <laughs> rib and he can't fight Jake Paul. So Jake Paul's on Sky Sports. At the moment, I'm just looking at him now on Sky Sports, and uh, he's been on other channels and he's slating Tommy and he said the door's closed and all that now. And blah blah, blah. what what do you think's happened there? Do you think Tommy now realizes he can't make weight and they don't want to pay the penalties with the contract and they pulled out? What what do you think's gone on there, Tell? So, first things first, right? Jake Paul has done more damage to that Fury brand than any other person in boxing has come close to doing. Or even me. Like, you now nah, you, he's he's <laughs> listen, he had John Fury trying to punch a TV screen. <laughs> John Fury doesn't take much to lose his call, does he? Oh mate, like he he dragged the Fury members through the mud. One man on his own, a YouTuber, managed to do that. Look, here's my thing. I think if, if you look at it strategically, right, the longer you leave these sorts of fights, the better the YouTubers get, right? Jake Paul's only going to get better. So there's no advantage in delaying it. So something must have gone wrong in camp. Well, because... when I realised when, when something were wrong, well, t Tommy, sh when John Fury flipped his lid and he was were, he were going on about, you got a dick, you've got a gash, I've got a whopper and all that, and Tommy will do your bird like a dog while you watch. When John were writing off all that, they should Tommy should have been out there in America at the press conference, shouldn't he? So Jake Ball's come out today. We're already pissed off when they missed the first press conference and now the fight's cancelled. He said he don't want to work with him. You know, he's setting his stall out now as, listen, you, may, you I'm paying good money. If you want to mess me about, you're gone. That's how it looks to me. I don't know what you think. Listen, in terms of that lane, that YouTube lane, the Paul brothers run that. So Tommy should have played ball because the whole conversation was, I could beat you on my worst day. That was, remember, that was the energy, right? Tommy Fury is like, on my worst day, I could beat you. Now when the pressure's on, it's like, well, got a cough, got a broken rib. So what? Brock had a broken rib before he fought John Pascal. 13 years ago. Yeah, Do you see the video of him putting up the fake WBC belts in his house? A year ago, yesterday. Yeah, he had the video with the fake WBC belts in his little cabinet. Yeah, 13 years ago. I was there, mate, ringside. What a fight, man. Everybody was on the feet, mate, standing on the chairs in that last round. I wasn't. I thought Pascal got robbed anyway. Fuck off. Yeah. Hurt him. Hurt Frost in the fourth, in the eighth, in the tenth. Referee, I mean, referee and judges weren't giving no credit to what Pascal was doing. Do you know, Pascal, after that fight, he went on to take Deacono and Chad Dawson's O's and they were pound for pound. 
and he went on to win WBC, IBO, and Ring Magazine belt. So that's proof that he was better than Froch. That were light heavyweight, though. <laughs> Oh, a weight that Carl was afraid to take on, but you know we we don't make you know we don't need to take that that route. You know what, yeah, you, tell you when you're walking around at one seven two, why do you want to be fighting at one seven five? For legacy, for your know, hasn't really got a legacy if you think about it. No, he hasn't. No. Who's who's his best win? So you're pissing up my leg now, aren't you? you no, who's, who's his best win? Oh, no, no, no. Porky test yeah. Who's Froch's best win? I took Pascal. Bote and George Groves. Oh, so he did the Abraham. He'd never been beaten ring. Okay, but none of those guys will be on the ballot list for the Hall of Fame, right? Fucking, is this where we're heading, Terry? Slicing the man again. I'm just saying to you, Russ, man, like this is, I'm using porky logic today, man. Like, you, you inspired me to go, who's his best win? Are you picking holes in Carl Frotch's CV, mate? Uh, well, he didn't get voted into the Hall of Fame, did he? He was on the list and he didn't make it this year. Well, he might have rubbed up a few people the wrong way, eh? No, no. Nah, struck. Do you know what, mate? Like, I don't think you're going to get past a list of Miguel Cotto, James Tony, and Roy Jones Jr. That's just that, a shit year to be on the list. Mate. Yeah, listen, that list is the sorry that kind of stoty thing. I think it's a bit political. Some of that because some of the people I've seen in it, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the CVs, I'm thinking they shouldn't be in it. They shouldn't be in it. They shouldn't be in it. But they're in it for certain. Sylvester Stallone's in it. He never had a fight in his life. Do you know what? Give it 10 years, mate. You might be in there. Imagine Porky's corner in the Hall of Fame. What am I going to be in there for? Wait, quality boxing content and maybe the angriest man in boxing history. Boxing makes you bitter, Eddie Earn told me that years ago. Boxing makes you bitter. I went, oh, does it fucking does, mate, let me tell you. <laughs> so Tommy Fury, right. Tommy Fury, where does he go now? Does he go back and fight somebody at Central Area? Pick a belt up for 30, 40 grand, or does he hang around like a bad smell, hanging out at the back of YouTubers? What does he do now? Where does he go? That's <laughs> because we don't actually know how good he is, right? And he's what? He's a light heavyweight. So you'd put him in with someone, I don't know, like a, put him in with like a Joel McIntyre. And let's, let's see, put him with Joel McIntyre. Who's like an English level light heavyweight, and let's just see where Tommy is. Yeah, yeah. What do you think to Jermaine Taylor's career, Terry? It's a strange one, isn't it? Because had he held out for another fifteen seconds, right, against Froch, oh. you, you imagine he was headed to the Hall of Fame at that point because he already had the two wins over Hopkins, right? Who's in all the fame? He, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that Froch loss was the thing where people just said, if I can get to the end of the fight against Taylor, he's going to start gassing. And then after that, that was him. That was him done. I think about him coming back six years later, though, and uh, being a world champion at middleweight. <laughs> Talented kid. Was he an Olympian? Olympic bronze. Yeah. Class. He, he was he was super talented. He just wasn't right in the head. Is he in jail now? Got nine wins over world champions. Now I think he's out, but I think he's on skid row. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame. It's a real, real, real shame. Okay. Because he was the real deal. You remember, like, he, he handled Hopkins easily. He beat Hopkins comfortably twice. Joe Carlzaghi yeah. didn't fight him, would he? Nope. And Carl Frotch knocked him out, but he can't go into all the fame. How bad is that? I, I don't think, listen, I think Taylor just ran out of gas, man. Frotch, Frotch, Frotch was hitting shadows for a whole fight, and then Taylor just got tired. Oh, yeah. You can't give Carl Frotch any credit, can you, Terry? Nah, nah. Although I would have helped him clear up his leaves the other day, and I would have been dragging that bag as well. He's got a rake. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Steffi Bull's show. Embarrassing. Three fights on it. The home fighters added up to 12 and 0. The away fighters added up to 0 and 16. So home fighters have never had a loss. Away fighters never had a win. 
How's that getting passed by board? <laughs> Nobody's O will go. Nobody's O will go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, look, I'm, I'm. How how thinly can we spread this thing we call boxing, Russ? No, it's like, not your fault though. I want to point it out. I think it's boxing's fault as a whole. Scraping the barrel, isn't it? Yeah, you know. And and what this is doing is so you've got these guys in the pros saying to young kids in amateur gyms, just turn over. The amateur thing ain't going to do you any good. So these kids are turning over too soon before they even know anything about the sport, they're getting exploited by these guys and they're just basically forced to sell tickets. Like, it's... it's the, it Basically, it's the drug game, isn't it? But just with boxing. Yeah. Find some naive kids, give them some product to sell. If they don't sell it, you humiliate them and then they're out the firm. If they do sell, then they might get promoted up the ladder. Yeah, I just think that everything I've been saying with you for the last couple of years is now starting to root, come home to roost, isn't it? Everything we've well, it's the boxing recession. This is the, yeah. we're, we're headed towards the dark ages. Yeah, and you said this had happened and everyone was saying, no, 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 it won't. Well, it's in that... Put me in fucking helmets! Put me in fucking helmets! We are helmets for even talking like that and telling the truth, according to some people, but we have to tell it. Like, don't we? Yeah, mate, like people were getting fat off this boxing thing for too long and they thought they could just give fans a substandard product. And what happened is the casual lot just pissed off and did something else. Yeah. And now they're just like, I don't want to pay that money for boxing anymore. It's not worth it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jose Burton. Should, what, can't Look. lack 175. He's not big enough for 200 pounds. Should there be a light cruiserweight division that's, say, 185, and then we can accommodate Jose Burton and a lot of other kids and, and generally but, uh, another a division. What do, you th- what do you think? But Okay, so let's let, let's start with Jose Burton first, right? He doesn't need titles anymore, does he? No, because he's got the... Right. Yeah, he just wants fights. Jose Burton wants fights that he can win, fights where he can entertain, fights where he can make good money. So he's looking for guys who also struggle at 175 and who are maybe the wrong side of 30 and just jump in with them and have a, a good old tear up. Like a like a Bob Adjusay, for example, jump in with him at 185, 186. Yeah, yeah. You know, I only want, I think I said this in my podcast. I just want to see Hosea Burton in, in entertaining fights. I don't care about weight classes and titles for Hosea. I just want to see him just entertain and really show us those skills that because he was a hell of an amateur back in the day, people forget that you know when he was fighting guys like Lewis Arias and the amateurs back in two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a very talented boxer. I mean, I just think he's had a bit of bad luck, Jose Burst. He maybe just needs a bit of a bit of a bit of luck. Well, some good news. I hope so, man. Like when I saw him after the the Aziz fight, it was it was tough, obviously, because Dan's a good mate of mine. But I like Jose, and I was like, mate. Don't stop. Whatever you do, don't stop boxing. Because, like, you don't have that many miles on the clock. I mean, keep doing your thing. He's never really been talked about, has he, really? Well, until that night, no. Do you think he looks... uh, He'll have been told that uh, on scales and before, you know, he fought fought down his ease. Mm. Which is never nice, is it? You know, when somebody's struggling with weight. I mean, he looked terrible at breakfast. That's what I can say to you, Porky. He looked terrible when when I saw when I saw him walking out of the breakfast room in the hotel, I was like, he can't win the fight. There's no way. He just looked terrible. Yeah, I feel sorry for him. I just hope he has some luck in 2022. Uh, before we come to the main course, do you see out of Martin Theobald and his pal? Yeah, we were speaking earlier today. Um, we're trying to trying to get a Christmas show in at some point. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I think we can, you know, we can make it happen, man. Yeah, be good to the, see the guys back. Ah, the streets, the streets are calling for it, so hopefully we'll make something happen. Good out. Is he all right, Martin? Yeah, he's all right. You know, everyone's rapidly approaching middle age now, aren't we, man? Just goes to show the problem with boxing, right? We shouldn't be the main voices in boxing as we head to middle age, yet we still are. Now, where are the young people coming through? Not interested, are they? Nah. You know what they don't? Because they don't like the toxicity 
that there is in boxing. Like boxing is a real boxing fans are hateful people. Do you know what I mean? Like hateful people. You know, like I'll give you an example. So Hamza Shiraz puts out a statement going, Look, I'm not a dirty fighter. What I did was wrong. Hold my hands up. I think the right thing to do is to give Bradley Skeet the rematch, right? He puts out the statement and people are just hating on the fact that he put out the statement. And I'm like, what? What do you want him to do? And they're probably boxing fans who'd want Hamza Shiraz to jump off the nearest bridge. It's crazy, man. Like, why are boxing fans so toxic, Russ? I don't know. I get like that sometimes. I can be quite toxic. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, towards promoters and the board of control and IF and blind and all that. I don't, I don't know why I'm like that. I'm passionate, I suppose, but I see. I, I know some fans who back the guys do get a bit. I know I used to be like that. I used to back Frotch, you know, follow him all over. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe because we've got fuck all else in our lives. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I, I, mate, I don't like. It's like at school. Remember at school, you'd have the hard kid at school, right? And there'd be loads of people in like the year below, the year below that. And they'd be like little groupies around that guy. Whatever he said was funny. <laughs> what do you call it, Porky? Ula hooping. Yeah, like when yeah, ula hooping. Like when Eddie Earn were telling a few jokes at a press conference I went to, and Caldwell and Richard Poxon and uh, and uh, Kel Brooks' dad were all laughing and that. And I thought, well, I, I, I didn't laugh. I'm like that <laughs> guy, you know, that Meech in Sopranos where everybody's yeah. laughing at Tony Soprano's joke. The camera zooms in on Meech and he's just stood there like that anyway with fucking whiskey. <laughs> zooms in on Tony's eyes are zooming in and he's fucking like that. He's the only one who ain't laughing. Well, that was fucking me that day. And I was looking at them. I was looking at fucking Poxon and Caldwell. Oh, going like that. We're telling to, he would a Frank Warren joke. I'm not going to repeat it, but it was something about Frank Warren. They were all fucking laughing. Richard Poxon, they were his fucking wine gums. Didn't off me one. I thought, well, I didn't fucking get that. I mean, I, I didn't get it, so I would there fucking fat as a pig Michelin, man. We won them big bubble coats. So I must have looked like a fucking double-decker. I, I must have looked like a fucking king-sized bed walking down the street. <laughs> uh, I would there with a big fucking anchor chain, like big red coat I had. And I just didn't get the joke, but they were laughing. And what you just said there is right. The school bully tells a joke. Everybody fucking starts rolling about, yeah. don't they? Yeah, it, 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 I'm... <laughs> I'm always worried about men who are, fa who are fans of other men. Like, you'd never get to mate in the wilderness if you were one of those guys. I'm just putting it out there like that. Yeah. So, I don't know why boxing fans are like, like they are, Terry. I don't know. And maybe this new generation... Like, do you remember the statistics that I sent you a while ago? 18 to 24 yeah. year olds and it were going down over a period since 2016. And the graph went down and down and down and down. And you called it, but I, I obviously checked it up, didn't it, all the month? It gone down and down and down and down. And the UFC one from 18 to 24 had gone up, up and up and up. And that was because of Conor McGregor, I think. I think people have thought, you know what? Conor McGregor, he got beat, he came back, and that's what champions do. There's none of this step aside shit and all that bollocks. He just got straight in. And that's why I respect him. Whereas in boxing, there's so much bullshit around, isn't it? And you know, at our age, bro, we're steeped in boxing history, aren't we? But you know, these young kids that are coming through, they're not fucking fuck. They're not having it either. They're like, fuck that. You know, the problem with boxing is boxing likes to position itself as a sport of gentlemen, right? So they go through these kind of fake little dances of handshakes and all of this and all of that. And like, there's a lot of fakeness around it. Oh, yeah, these guys are all gentlemen. What I love about the UFC is it's just fighting men. Yeah. If they shove each other at the way and they shove each other at the way, they start throwing bottles at each other, it happens. Why? Because they're fighting men. There's just no bullshit with it. It's raw and it's real. And we need to get boxing back to that. Not, not all of this media trained rubbish. Like, yeah, I take each fight as it comes. I'm going to sit down with my team and we're going to work out what's best, what the right next move is. No. Just fuck off. Either chase titles or chase money. Make your fucking mind up. But be honest about it. A bit like that uh, press conference where Amir Khan and Ern and all them set it up and Amir threw drink on kid, didn't he? Yeah. Do you know the only press conference I've enjoyed and I had to go back and watch it was David Price and Cash Allen. Yeah, that would that would be. Ah, I'm made up. I'm made up, Cash. 
you're getting fucking battered, mate. I was like, oh my god. I wanna hate, I just wanna hate him. I wanna hate him, you cunt. We're getting all that price if we and bang yeah. it and that and we're like, oh god, what I could dig off him, David Price. Mate, that, that might be one of the best press conferences I've seen. Ten minutes of pure joy. <laughs> Hold your feet, one, two, left, go. That's it, turn. Boom, 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 turn, yeah? Let's do it slow to start with. Jab, and hand. Yeah, we're going to turn the hips. Let's get them hips, yeah? So when that eye's hand comes over, yeah, we've committed now. We've committed. Bang, yeah? So where are we going from there? Yeah, look where the hips are, look where the right hand is. Bang, yeah? We bring it down. Yeah, not wild. We take, turn the right hand over. We look at the target. Boom. We bring the left up round, yeah? Just one, two to start with. One, two. There we go. One, two. One, two, left up. Come on. Bang. And again. Come on. Now come on. Side One, two, left up. Come on. Side Come on. There we go. And again. There we go. Cash got under his skin that day, didn't he, Cash Alley? Yeah. Uh, we'll finish off on, well, Anthony Yard. And Arthur fight, uh, I had to take an L. I had uh, Arthur on points in my bet at the bookies. But Anthony Yard turned up and changed his game plan. Who takes the credit, James Cook or Tunde? Tunde, all the way. And here's my, here's my logic, Russ. If Anthony Yard had lost, we wouldn't be blaming James Cook, would we? No, we'd have been blaming Tunde, wouldn't we? So we have to give him the credit when Anthony Yard wins because he's, he's the guy that's accountable. And people need to understand, because I, I know it's easy, like when people hate Tunde, like a lot of people do, it's easy to give James Cook the credit. And James Cook's a lovely man. Um, I know him through his work at the Pedro Boxing Club. But you couldn't name me five elite boxers that have come out of Pedro, right? Yeah. So if you're a head trainer of a gym that hasn't produced elite level guys, you may be a good boxing brain. By all means, I think James Cook's a smart man. I respect him as an elder in the sport and he's done a lot for the sport. But he's not a miracle worker. Mm. He's just a voice of common sense. Yeah. I, I genuinely think what happened in this fight is the real Anthony Yard showed up. I don't think it's down to particularly Tunde or any. I think the real Anthony Yard showed up. And the disappointment in the fight, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of Lyndon Arthur fans will agree with this, is that Lyndon didn't do anything different. Do you think they'll want You've, to tell you? Not after that. Too decisive. Like, that, that wasn't... And look, I, I, I like Lyndon Arthur, as you well know, but that wasn't even close. No. That wasn't even close. Lyndon didn't put a dent in Anthony Yard. Didn't put a single dent in him. And so we've now realized Lyndon Arthur's got the, the Zelfa Barrett problem, right? You don't really know if Zelfa Barrett's any good because you essentially get the same Zelfa Barrett in every fight. It just depends on what, impo what opponent's in front of him. And it seems that's the same thing with Lyndon Arthur. You get the same Lyndon Arthur in every fight. But at some point, these guys have to become more adaptable. Like, when that fight was getting out of control for Lyndon Arthur, what he should have done is say, you know what, I'm just going to stay in the middle and trade with this guy. See, see what he's really about. Let, let, let's just have a little 10-second swing out and let me, let me feel it and let him feel my power. And then we'll go from there. That, that, that thing of going to the ropes, which seems to be a big thing in this country, and I don't understand why, that thing of going to the ropes is getting people beaten. And I've seen, I've, it, look, it happened, it happened to Hosea Burton. Hosea Burton went to the ropes. Dan Aziz beat the life out of him. My friend Denzel Bentley went to the ropes against Felix Cash. Felix beat the life out of him. I don't understand who's training these guys to always go to the ropes. Boxing's won from the middle of the ring. 
wherever anyone tells you, boxing has won from the middle of the ring. Muhammad Ali said it was a beautiful thing to go to the ropes. Well, no, 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 no. He made it look beautiful, right? Uh, but he's the greatest of all time. Or one of them, I should well, say. Not everybody's Ali, are they, I suppose? Exactly. And, and, and the thing about Ali is Ali knew what to do on the ropes. So Ali could get on the ropes and he knew as long as he got his gloves on your forearms, he could predict what was going to come next. These guys just cover up on the ropes and then they're just a punch bag. Yeah. And it's a shame because we, look, Saturday night was a great moment for British boxing. It was, an, it was a shot in the arm for British boxing. There's no question about that. But we wanted that to be a war. We wanted Yard to have earned that win the hard way or Lyndon to have earned that win the hard way. That's what we were looking for. Mm. Where's Lyndon going now then? To, probably to Sky. He's, there, he's left Frank Warren, so he's off to Sky. Mm. And Anthony Yard, what does he do now? Does he have to turn up in America with Sunday to watch Callum Johnson and Joe Smith Jr. to put a bit of pressure on winner? Uh, you won't put it past Tunde turning up there, would you? It's not really Tunde style, though, is it? Uh, what? Phew. Come on. They'll go, mate. They'll have to do, won't they? But if Callum Johnson wins that fight against Joe Smith Jr., do you see Callum Johnson uh, fighting yard next to you? Or do you see him having a few defences first? I, fight build up. I, I would ask Joe Gallagher what happens next, and I wouldn't be sure that you know the answer before you ask him. It would be my political answer. I think Joe understands that he's in this unique position where he's valuable to so many outlets right now. So he's got Tasha Jonas with Boxer. Um, he's got Callum with Frank. Uh, Paul Butler with MTK. I mean, he, he, he knows he's got opportunity. I think he's got one of the young ladies with the zone, hasn't he? So Joe Gallagher's in this really good position where... A very good position now, isn't he? Joe is a man. Yeah. Yeah, like he's... And I don't know how many years he's taken to ruin him, didn't he, last year? This time last year, Ern tried to ruin him, didn't he, in boxing? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? When he's like, if Joe doesn't apologise for saying that we're racist now because of Tasha Jonas... He's history... And Joe kept yeah. his counsel, didn't he? Um, he? He's kept his kept quiet. He's gone about his business, and in a year, look at position he's in now with twelve fighters. Yeah, no credit 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 to Big Joe for that because there are times where we've all thought Joe Gallagher was done, right? Was what? And that we've all thought Joe Gallagher was done at various points. I thought like, he finished when they did that, and I thought, you know what? Respect to him for coming out and speaking out at Sky about how they were treating him and match him. I thought big on him, and, and he got loads of respect on all hardcore channels. And, and I, I thought Eddie would make it really difficult for him. And, and, and it's ended up Eddie's the one being pushed out, isn't it? Oh, Eddie's obviously not working. Eddie, well, well, Eddie's struggling. Yeah, really like, struggling. Really, really, really struggling. Like, he will be leaving America with his tail between his legs in the next 12 to 18 months. They, they've driven him out. Like, They've driven him out. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, isn't it? They don't want to work with him. Maybe Leonard Ellaby. I didn't know Leonard Ellaby had that uh, bit of hatred like he's got for Eddie. And go on, Ed, Leonard, big Leonard. Well, well, look, and here's the thing I've never understood about her, right? You think you can just keep giving it to people and they're not going to come and see you. I don't think Leonard Ellaby cares about your 4-0 and record, three by way of. I don't think he cares about that. It's all lies anyway, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Ellaby doesn't care about that. Like, <laughs> it's a lack of awareness, Russ. You know, what, what's her now, 42 years old? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's still behaving like a 25-year-old privately educated kid. Like, in London, you see these guys, right? They, they all go to this nightclub called Infernos. And they're those sorts of guys who are just inappropriate. So a woman will walk past and they just lift up her skirt or they'll put their hands down at the top. You know, the scumbags, right? 
but because they're from that sort of privileged background where there are no consequences to the things they do, they end up doing dumb stuff like that. And then a lot of them end up becoming MPs and politicians. And Hearn's of that group where it's like, well, there, there are no consequences for me because I'm rich, but these guys are all from poor backgrounds, so I can just shit on them. That's essentially Hearn's attitude at the moment, isn't it? It's I'm always, better than you. It's always been like that, really, hasn't it? I mean, I've, I'm not going to go into detail and name names, but, you know, somebody told me a story from, who actually used to be his mate told me a story that he were a school bully and a bad school bully. And we're not talking just lads as well. He terrorised women as well. You know what I mean? Oh, Jodie Marsh. She went to a school, didn't she? she took fucking name out of my mouth. That's one of them, yeah. We're, I'm not saying you were battering and beating him up, but basically, you know, emotional. We were a bit quite hard on her. And she had a bit of a nose going on at the time, didn't she? And Yeah. And, and Ern were one of the cool gang, one apparently at school, and he gave her an hard time. Is, that, is it in her book or, or something as well? Or she's un, or she doesn't name him, but she's named him on social media or something, aren't she? Or yeah, something about it. But you can imagine him being annoying. Jeremy Clarkson were he's from around he's from Berg Wallace. He were annoying. He uh, he went to uh, Repton Boys Club, didn't he? But he were annoying in area. Uh, you know, one of them kids that just annoy you, but they're from privileged backgrounds, think they can do what they want, don't they? Yeah. You but, know. Uh, maybe Eddie's got a rude awakening with America, so I don't know. But when Eddie first started out, I was team Eddie because I thought he was a breath of fresh air. And then I think he fell in love with himself, and then he started rubbing me up the fucking wrong way, mate. Do you know what I think he did? He did what all of those guys from those backgrounds do, Russ. He figured out what buttons to press with what people, and he just did it. Where he went, do you know what? If I can just appeal to the hardcores in the beginning, I'll be the people's champion. They'll want me to win. And then once I've got my money, I just switch to the other side. Because oh, if you matter? really think about Matchroom, if you think about Matchroom now, Russ, they're, they're really just doing cards for the hardcores. If you're really looking at it, Devin Haney is like, he's not mainstream. You know, yeah. Connor Ben isn't quite mainstream. He, he, in the boxing world, he may be, but in the wider public, Conor Ben's not mainstream. These are hardcore cards. Without Joshua, Hearn's just doing hardcore cards. Mm. Remember Where, when he used to laugh at the hardcores? Yeah, yeah, he still does. Where does he go if Anthony Joshua says, do you know what, I've had enough of boxing, I'm going to go back to Watford, I'm going to smoke weed, I'm going to get fat, and I'm going to pop every bird in the area. If Joshua wants to go and do that, where does that leave Eddie Hearn with boxing, Terry? I tell you what he'll do. He'll get on a plane to France and he'll say to Tony Yoka, I will pay for your English lessons. I will pay for your house in London. Please come to Matchroom. Please. That's what he'll do. Do you think? Yeah. He will beg Yoka. Whatever it costs, he'll get Yoka. And he'll create, create another Joshua. Same height, same physique. And he'll teach him to yeah. English gold medalist as well. And he'll, he'll run him and Hergovic up until they can, or like he did with Joshua and Dillian, he'll run Yoko up one channel, he'll run Hergovic up the other, and hopefully do it undisputed at the top. He'll just try the same trick again. Do you think if, you think British fans are four for all that, though? Yeah, I do. I do, because British boxing fans are generally dumb. Like, look at all the rubbish we've tolerated. Like, do you remember five years ago, if, if a box was ever done for doping, I could never watch their fights. Da, 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 da. Mm. Then one of their heroes got done. And they're like, oh, well, he's, you know, it's all part of a process. We can't talk about it. Do you remember that? Yeah. These guys were just acting like bitches. So boxing fans always claim to, they, they, like, like I said before, it, back to the school ground. They're the fake hard men. Boxing fans are the fake hard men in school. You know those guys that you always wondered how they had a reputation because they'd never had a fight before. Mm. Yeah, why are people scared of this guy? He's never had a fight before. And that's what boxing fans are. The guys that talk tough, and you're like, let me just look into this guy's background, and there's nothing there. Yeah, like the guy who walks around saying he's cock of the school and nobody's seen him have a fight. <laughs> yeah. And then one day he does, and you're like, oh, that 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 didn't go well. Yeah. 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 Okay then. Uh all right then. Uh, where do you think Billy Joe Billy Joe goes now? So on does mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, he's he's still cleaning off the 
the ashes from his front garden. I've seen Billy Joe on a photo in a pub somebody sent me. He had a big white fleece coat on. He looked like a snowman. He was massive. Did you yeah. see it? Yeah. He looked big, didn't he? Yeah. He had a big beard on him. He looked like Grizzly Adams. But he blows up like that, doesn't he? He gets like 15, 16 stone quickly. A little bigger than that, Terry. Oh, start calling him Porky. I know, yeah. Start calling me Slim and him Porky. I just think that glasses are full. I mean, where do you where do you rate Billy Joe's career? Uh kind of he he's got he got out of boxing what he deserved. Yeah. You know, he 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 could have worked to become one of the greats. He didn't want to, so he didn't become one of the greats. Yeah. Boxing doesn't boxing rewards consistency i know people talk about skills and talent and stuff it's not oh, that oh, okay, yeah, go on. yeah boxing rewards consistency boxing rewards the the men and women that walk into the gym every day boxing rewards the people that don't get injured boxing rewards the people that keep working on their skills boxing rewards the people that get up at 6 a.m to go running it rewards the people that don't duck out sparring boxing rewards people who do the things that the average person is scared to do it's as simple as that, Russ. And when you see people not making it, and I remember you and I used to talk about Frankie Gavin, and I used to tell you, Frankie Gavin, his career will go nowhere, not because he's not good enough. He's just not, he's not consistent. He's not faithful enough to the sport. I just thought Frankie Gavin were world class, me. I had Frankie Gavin down. I watched him win a gold medal, you know, in, in amateurs in Chicago. And everybody and their dad wanted to sign him, didn't they? Yeah, but I remember if, you, if you'd listened to people in the sport at the time, what they said was no power, no discipline. What's he, what's he going to do as a pro? He wasn't very disciplined, was he? But he had mega skills, didn't he? But it's, look, like I just said, Russ, the skills don't mean anything if the basics aren't there. If you're not fit enough to do the distance, if you're not strong enough to survive, if you're not durable enough to do the camp, your skills mean nothing. Do you know how many people there are in this country who are skillful? Like, really, really skillful. There's a kid, there's a kid I used to train, a kid called Julio Tuizana, right? And I remember he jumped in and did some rounds with Josh Taylor once. And Josh couldn't land a glove on him. But that doesn't mean that he's better than Josh Taylor. He's not. Because Josh is consistent. Um, Julio's talented. He's probably probably the person I've seen who's the hardest to hit. Like in the flesh, I've uh, I've rarely seen people who are impossible to hit. He's one of them. But just didn't want it enough to be consistent. Yeah. Yeah. You have to want it, Paul. You know what I mean? It's like you, know, you used to sell cars, right? Yeah. You can't sit at home when it's raining. No. Do you know what I mean? you can't, no, no, you can't sit at home because old, what's his name? Old Lee over the road, he'll be out there. He'll, he'll be selling. Yeah, he was called Lee, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they all are around there. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. You can't sit in hours because yeah. always going to be looking at your stock, are they? You've got to be up and yeah. out. And pretty boring. You know, e even if you're in the drug game, you can't just sit at home. You can't be like, well, it's too cold for me to go and put that work in. <laughs> Everything in life rewards consistency and sacrifice. Everything. And a lot of these guys don't have it. Billy Joe doesn't have it. Fury's discovered it, right? Fury's discovered what it is to be consistent and dedicated. Because the Fury we're seeing now, we didn't see before Vladimir, did we? Yeah. No, well, before Vladimir, he was on his toes and he were back back foot fighter one he and his and all yeah. that and he wasn't living properly he'd yeah. blow up he'd do this he'd do that you know now it's a bit more he's a bit more disciplined he's polished he's more mature now and he understands you've got to be consistent and he's and he's actually knocking guys out now mm -hmm. yeah all right then uh, well you got planned for the rest of the evening terry uh i'm gonna see if i can get out to the gym at some point i just want to I was, I'll, you know what I was going to do today, Russ? I was going to do a pulling session. So just loads of pull-ups, some rowing. But 
I did bends yesterday, so I'm a bit fragile. So I might just go and just loosen up on the bag. So do a Mike Mensah uh, bit of T-bar rowing workout. Do you know, I'm not really a fan of the T-bar row. So I, I do, I, I use the barbell instead. And I just get, I mean, you know, put the 320s on each side, do a few pulls on that. Just trying to get that porky back. You know, like, just like, what do they used to call you? The human buffalo. The oak. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what were Dorian Yates's nickname? The Shadow. In the Shadow, yeah. The Shadow. Okay, I'm going to watch this box set tonight. What is that one? I'm going to pour myself a pint of Guinness. It's James Cagney box set. I'm going to decide which one to watch. Mate, when are you going to get into the whiskey and just park that Guinness and stuff? Just get, get into the whiskey, Paul. Some whiskey. I've got plenty of whiskey. Uh, I don't know. That's what you need with James Cagney. It's just some whiskeys. He said I can only uh, have Guinness. He said just have one can of Guinness oh. tonight. But I might, I might treat me saying it's December. I might have a, a lot. Yeah. I've got some uh, downstairs, some really, really expensive whiskey that a friend gave me. Yeah. Bottles, and I'm gonna, I might pour me some more. I think I'm going to watch White Heat or Public Enemy. I might watch them both. I like these old films. I just sit and lose my son. Turn my phone off. <laughs> sit and lose my son. Nod off. Usually, usually get 20 minutes into the second one and I know to pass out, but it's something different to uh, boxing, isn't it? Or being tight. Yeah. Computer. Uh, but that's a good idea. I'm, 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 I'm going to watch your film tonight. Don't know what I'll watch, I'll but I'll watch your film. I think I'm going to watch White Heat. I'm having a whale, ma. I like that other one, though, Angels with Dirty Faces, when he, uh, yeah. sticks, gun, he sticks gun into his hand and goes, yeah, collect that dough and fast. I like all them old old films, and they don't make them like they used to now, do they? No, what but that was, you in the, that was you in, in Upper Edlington back in the day. Back in the day. Angels with Dirty Faces were made in 1938, but White Heat were made in 49. But what we got now, Essex Boys Retribution on Amazon. Uh, R- Rise of the Foot Soldier 5. Rise of the Foot Soldier 32. I mean, how many more oh, no. films are we going to see? They started off with Sean Bean in 2000, didn't they? And 22 years later, they're still making... Do you know, do you know what? Like, I, I, I remember I was at a boxing show and I met some of those Essex gangsters from like that era. And yeah. they were just like, mate, it's nothing like the movies, man. They were just dirty junkies. And I was like, really? Like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, uh, you know... People glamorize that lifestyle too much. It's not glamorous at all, mate. It's, uh, no. it's horrible, that lifestyle. I've lived it. I'm not, I'm not, I want a gangster, but I were, I was shoving loads of stuff to up my throat, up my nose and down my throat and what whatnot. And it's it's horrible existence. It's a horrible existence. It's detached from real world, you're in a bubble, a bit like Eddie Earn, really. He's in the Eddie Earn bubble, isn't he? He's he yeah. out of touch with everybody, isn't he? Yeah. And he can't be around people anymore just because of the dumb shit he said and done. He can't just be around normal people. Mm. What do you think will, will, will be uh, Eddie's undoing eventually when he says, you know what, I am fucking done with this. We've made over 300 million net. Because this is what he's telling people. We've made over 300 million net from boxing alone. So why is he hanging around like a bad smell now? You think sooner or later... Penny will drop and he'll think, I need to fucking go now before I just embarrass myself. He's made three million net from boxing. 300 million. 300 million net. It's worth 300 million, isn't it? Is that to come? Okay. So let's, let, let's, but let's just do the numbers, right? Because this, he's got to be getting a margin on these things. Right? No. So someone would have to tell me that Eddie Hearn's pulling in about. Three billion in gross revenue. They were getting that kind of money. Making a million. If you go on to company house, when they make they, they make forty six million or something, two thousand and nineteen alone, and since then it's gone astronomical, especially last year, hasn't it? And then there's this, year. and it's just millions. Of, it's like a million a week, isn't it? So work, do the maths. But what, how? The, what, what? Wait, what's he making that, that on though? He, unless he's just taking money out of the zone. I don't know, mate, but he made a lot of money. They reckon them offices in Manhattan that he had, 
what it was mega money for the other just for lease on it where they got it. So was that part of the con where they said to the to the, the zone people, look, we're pretty serious. We've got this long-term Manhattan skyscraper floors and all this. We're going to rent these. We're here to stay. Well, it's gone sour, hasn't it, now? We don't hear not about that, do we, now? Are they? Because I'm trying to work out how they're making a million a week. Because I'm like, the shows they put on can't be profitable. Go on, come to the house. It's all on there. It's all on there, mate. The, the, the thought, the, it's a mega company, isn't it? Now, match what? Behemoth. Matchroom sport or matchroom boxing? I don't know. It's a matchroom, isn't it? Go on, have a look now while you're there. The Med Millions. We ain't wrong game, must tell you. I know. We ain't wrong game. Do you think they'll say, and when, when that balance sheet don't hit it, don't hit it like it has been hitting, you think they'll say, do you know what? Let's bail out. And then he might come back and change his attitude in two or three years later and everybody might like him again. He might say, do you know what? Rubbed everybody up wrong way. All managers and all trainers. I mean, look at all these people and promoters as well. He's rubbed up wrong way at media, some, some at media. Look at all these people now. They're not signing with him, are they? Look at Fraser Clark. He's just gone with Boxer and Sky, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. And there's others that they're not going to Eddie. Eddie used to have that monopolised, that EIS, didn't he? Well, well, no, no. See, remember we talked about, we always talk about this, Russ. Yeah. People had to go through Eddie to get to Sky. People really just want Sky. Yeah. Yeah. They want Sky because you can get on Soccer AM, you can get on this, you can get on that, and they've got a pay-per-view capability that works. Yeah. Right? And in the old days, to do that, you had to go through Eddie. Now that you don't have to go through Eddie, what do you need Eddie Hearn for? We don't need him. They don't need him now. They're just good direct at source, don't you? Yeah. All that stuff about Eddie Hearn making stars has been proved to be rubbish now, right? Oh, well, oh, the stars you signed from EIS are already in Team GB. It's done for you. Callum Smith, Katie Taylor, she won Team GB, but she had, she, were, she won a gold medal on it. She signed her. Savannah Marshall beat Shield. She will uh, World Amateur Gold. Charlie Edwards were in Team GB, Team GB team, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Well, there's other other people that he's had from up there. Anthony Joshua, a Coley, Boatsy. You know, it, it, all that's done for you. But what has he done with somebody who's just come from streets, from debut, who weren't up there? I can't name and, one person. Can you and who know? weren't the kid of a famous boxer? No, I can't. One person that the, that the Hearns have done something with who weren't from Team GB. Do you know who it were? They'd be fucking eyed. They had him from debut, didn't they? Yeah, behind. They give him a trial back in the day, and uh, he had a list. Then he went, I, 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 I'm a b- 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 boxer, Barry Ernst. So spar him there. I think they put him in with that uh, Jez Hardy, and he smashed him up, didn't he? And he went, Sign here, Sam. You know what's crazy, right? I didn't realize Herbie Hyde. He He's the only one school. to win a world title. And that were a WBO, and it weren't recognised at the time. And I, uh, Riddick Bow lobbed it in bin, didn't he? Riddick Bow lobbed the WBC in the bin. He didn't lob the WBO, but he sort of got rid of it, didn't he, after the beat, uh, but then he didn't use it, did he? But he put the WBC bit in the bin a few years earlier, but RBI uh, didn't recognise WBO. So, but it, they, he's the only one, isn't he, to win a world title with match them who's not from Team GB, from David. I could be wrong. Kent will probably do some checking on it. But Kent, you got that wrong about your Irish countrymen who you said were from debut we earned and one from Team GB. No, he weren't, because I checked. So, no, Who was that? I forgot his name now. He was a, a guy from uh, Ireland, and he, were, he won a world title. I think Kent said he won it with Barry Earn and he'd been there from debut, but I don't think he were, but I forgot the guy's name. But Kent will It's be- not Steve Collins, is it? Because he wasn't there. Oh, no, it wasn't Steve Collins. No, no, it was somebody else that were uh, an Irish guy. But he, he uh, I'm not sure. I don't think it was Bernard Dunn either. I forget the kid's name. Uh, if you tell me some names of some Irish world champions, you want mate Wayne, Wayne, Wayne McCulloch, who were a fantastic fighter. Yeah, hard as nails. Yeah, uh, but uh, Kent will probably say, in fact, well, I'm. 
Well, I'm in. I'm gonna ring him. I'm gonna ring him up. I'm gonna ring him up. All right. So it is. Yeah, so Kent it is. Oh, yeah. Kent on phone. In fact, Kent's on TV. There. Can you see him? He's on TV. Aye, so he is, indeed he is, so it is, so it is. Everywhere I look, I've got Kent, he's, like, he's even on my TV. Aye. Kent, what's the crack? Aye, that's that, that's that, man, aye, that's the crack, man. Somebody said to me in the comment section, Kent's got a right brass neck on him, I said, he's got a neck on him. <laughs> <laughs> Only joking, Kent, he's all right, Kent. Me, me, me pal Richard from... Uh, from Robert and Wyatt on the other day, big lad with shaved head. He uh he went he gets on really well with Ken. Uh let's have a look here. Have a look. Ken, here we are. Kent. Uh I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll ring him. I'll ring him up. Uh Kent. Here we are, Kent, Northern Ireland. See if I can get that name still told me I didn't know otherwise. Interactive TV. Interactive TV, yeah. Uh, not even answering now. He's probably watching uh, Ali Fraser through. Oh, I'll try him on WhatsApp. Uh, and I'm just up if you press it on us. Ken, it's Russ. Uh, do you remember when I had you on the channel uh, a first couple of times and I said to you that Barry Earn only had her behind from debut to win a world title that weren't from part of Team GB and all that? And you went, no, 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 they're an Irish guy. He had him. What was that Irish guy's name? But it turned out that he, he, he weren't. He'd, he'd been with another promoter before he went to Barry Earn. What was his name? The Irish fighter. Can you let me know? Cheers, Kent. Hope you're well, mate. Sat at home in your watches or a cap. <laughs> he, he might text me back. Oh, we were last on his phone at 7.49. He might not. He might be watching uh, Cora or something. Or whatever they watch over there. What do they watch over there? EastEnders, is it? I don't know. Mate, no idea, mate. Dairy Girls, I don't know. Dairy Girls. But, uh, but what you got a plan for the rest of the week, Tell? Oh, mate, it's just work, man. You know, this is probably the last four weeks before Christmas, so just a load of shit You've to get done. You've smashed it, though, haven't you? Last year, working from home, we've saved all that tube money. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, put, put a little bit of money aside, you know. Me, buy myself a Watcher Saw a T-shirt to celebrate. Watcher Saw, did you like me thumbnail that Cameron did for the video earlier? I said, yeah. put, me a, put me a thumbnail on that's exciting. Put me a thumbnail on. Like, about somebody who I've never even mentioned in the fucking video. It drives me crazy out like that, you know. <laughs> People tune in and think, oh, it's something about Chisor, and they don't fucking mention his, mention his name. It drives me mad. You know, little things, little little things drive little minds crazy, don't they? Did he just text me? No. I don't know. He, uh... No, he hasn't, he hasn't text me. I'll find out and we'll, we'll mention it next one. I don't think it was Bernard Dunn. Don't forget Wayne McCork. Uh, it were an Irish guy. That, oh, hang on a minute. Hang it's on. not one of the McGee's, is it? Hang on a minute. Hang on. No, it won't Brian McGee. Eamon Lachlan or something. Aye. Uh, yeah, well, Eamon Lochran, so it is, so it is, so it is. Yeah, well, it, well, it weren't, it weren't, we checked up, and it, it can, I think he said on channel he got that wrong. He does get things wrong from time to time, Ken, but it's very rare. He's a very sharp individual with boxing, very sharp. Very, aye, very sharp. Aye, that's that, man. Aye, that's that, man. That's that, mate. Nice. That's, that's that. That's indeed, that is that, man. You'll be endearing yourself to uh, the people of Ireland this evening, Terry. Hey, listen, man, I, I do accents from all regions of the country. I'm inclusive, equal opportunities, man. Yeah. I'm embracing diversity today. What did you think to uh, that video? Uh, a big John Fury, big fighting man, he's bringing on the hard road. <laughs> John Fury, we said, I just like to be left alone in the middle of nowhere with my uh, trailer. 
in Midland Woods, I live off the land. You know what I mean? I, I don't I don't like to be around people. <laughs> Next, <laughs> he's at a show every day, he's in the gym every day, ranting and raving, screaming and shouting. Mate, he was doing more than four reps when I saw him doing the old pull downs though. Yeah, there were no on um, fucking dog bones on end that fucking thing. They didn't show you that, did they? I could have pulled them down with me, Corey. <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> six weeks ago, I found a video on here. I don't know how to save it for helmets at year because helmets at year, folks, have already started coming in and he's had loads already. I don't want it, my channel to be about him, but it, he, uh, he, he does numbers and people are intrigued by him. But in this video that I've found, right, He's there and they're going on about the world. And he said, I just want to heal the world. Oh, I remember that one. I just want to heal the world. And every time he does something wrong, he pops up somewhere, doesn't he? Do, speaking about good deeds and charity stuff and this and that. And he's a character, isn't he? But no, he, he's, he's a bit of a contradiction, isn't he? <coughs> but, like, uh, like, like, like Carl the Code Contradiction Frost. Why well, was like, oh, why are you fucking digging Carl Frotch out yet again, Terry? You fucking helmet. What what's going on? You're forgetting helmet boats. I thought Nottingham people now. You'll have all Irish people on your back now for taking piss out of their accent. You'll have all Nottingham people for digging their their man out. You know when the Cobra goes out for a drink in Nottingham, mate. Jesus, it's like a big thing. Crowds surge to him, mate. You've never seen that like it, mate. It's like Ali coming to town. Yeah, but they do that for Tyre and Booth as well. Who's told you that? Who's I've seen the videos. Who, who's told you that, Terry? You've seen videos. What? The people surging down Parliament Square when Tyrone Bull goes for a drink around Nottingham. Is that what some your video? Yeah, yeah. Like? You know where they have to stop the tram? Like, they have to literally stop the tram. Shouting right. utter nonsense. Tie and moves a blender. He'd probably blend in in Nottingham. If he went to Nottingham, he'd blend in. Nobody would probably know who he is. Well, that, that, honestly, that, no, but that's 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 like crotch. Like anywhere that's not the Phoenix Boxing Club, they don't know who he is, man. Where's he from? Gedley. Yeah, that's where he's from, isn't it? Yeah, he's from there originally. He lives in Burton Joyce now, doesn't he? Yeah, it's nice out there. I was, I was looking at houses around there as well. You were looking at houses in Burton Joyce, what where Cluffy lived. Yeah, I wouldn't mind being Frotch's neighbour. We could hang out. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you could. I'm sure they'd be pleased to see you. No, we do a channel, though. We call it Cobra's Corner. Cobra's Corner. You're talking fucking utter rubbish now. You're trying to fucking wind me up now, aren't you? Not at all. Not at all. Pal out. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking twat, you. Tell hey, me. but quick one, though. I was, I was thinking about this one, Russ. Yeah. How many trainers has Fury had in his career? Fury is well, he's had his late uncle, Huey. He's had yeah. Robert McCracken. He had him for one camp and one fight. Stephen uh, Egan. Is it Stephen Egan? Yeah, but that, that were uh amateur, wasn't it? And early pro. Yeah, they did him for one fight or something. I couldn't be sure on that. A couple of fights. Maybe yeah. he's had uh Peter. Fury, his uncle, he's a uh, Ben Davis, John. Sugar Hill. I don't know if John's ever been in a corner, but if you want to say John, yeah, but I very much doubt that. I don't think he's trained him at all for one single fight. I have seen him in a corner in his early career. Uh, yeah. But he's had, bit, I think it's nine, is it or something? I think I've seen something in an interview we did. I think it were about nine people. I think he even spoke about it himself. Maybe he's took something from each person. I don't know. That's mental, isn't it? Because normally what we say is stick with the same guy. Mm. Well, Matthew Macklin did it. He had a lot of training. Dave Allen's had over 10, hasn't he? Uh, we, 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 mate, we're talking about different ends of the spectrum here. Yeah, I know, but Dave Allen had all them trainers. It didn't work for him, did it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Ray Leonard only had a couple, didn't he? He had the uh, Angelo Dundee and he had that uh, other guy, what were he called? I forget now. Because what? Frosch only had one, right? He had Rob, Robert McCracken from day one. And you got to give him credit. You got to give him credit for sticking with him, hasn't he? Too many people. I think, I think he, he would have been better if he'd gone to Adam Booth. 
Go to Adam Boo. He's the best. The Dark Lord. <laughs> I like Adam Boo, mate. I like him. Spoke to Why? Him the other day. I think he comes across all, all right. He came across all right when I spoke to him. Uh, but I don't know him as I don't know him as a person. Uh, Richard Towers speaks highly of him. So, but uh, I don't know Adam Boo as a person. But he, he seems to be the go-to guy. Liam Williams apparently has gone there. So, I don't know. He obviously knows his stuff, doesn't he? He's done well for himself. He's a wealthy man, isn't he? He's done well at boxing. There you go. He knows how to, as Porky would say, he knows how to exert himself in every situation. Well, I don't think we can see as much as Adam Booth. Adam Booth used to get loads of stick, but I don't think we see as much of Adam Booth as we used to. Because a few years ago, Adam Booth were everywhere, one of networking and stuff like that. And I think he's just, he's a bit more one of them senior trainers now, isn't he? He's a bit senior. And I think he, he doesn't, doesn't do to, anything. Well, that'll happen to Ben Davies and Andy Lee and Caldwell soon. They'll have to, they'll be senior, won't they? And then the next lot will be coming through, won't they? I suppose, I don't know. Shouldn't What's the way for you to start training Porky? Because like you said, man, if Chris Medley can get a licence, I'm sure you can get a second. But when I said that, I didn't mean it fucking as a detriment to Chris, did I? He took it wrong way, didn't he? And I only, yeah. to, I only wanted the seconds licence. I didn't want to be a trainer. Mate, that, that might be one of my funniest evenings ever. Just just those voice notes. Man. I, I think I've got them saved somewhere. They were brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, well, fucking, I was fucking steaming that night, wasn't I? Steaming. I think I had a big deal with Dennis and fucking Chris rung me up. I think he said, what did he say to me now? I thought that was my pal. I went, what the hell about? That said on our channel that, yeah, I'm going to apply for a licence. If Chris Medley can get one, fucking anybody can. Or I, if Chris Medley can get one, I can get one. But I didn't mean it like that. And I went, what are you yeah. fucking on about? I had a drink. I'm going down to it. You know what I mean? But I don't know. One of them things, isn't it? When I were a wild man back in the day. Idiots. That was like peak porky. Yeah, you know what I mean? A couple of shandies down, me steaming down the motorway. We got Chris on the phone. And I went, you fucking what? Fuck off. And that's how you end up with beef, don't you? But now, look, he's one of my pals, isn't he? I'm working with him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But uh, what... I think it's hard to get a trainer's licence, isn't it? Or a second's licence now, isn't it? Nah, it's the same process. You see, what, what they like, Porky, is it's like an old boys club. So if you put on your application, yeah, 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 I'm going to be working with so-and-so. If it's a trainer of the board like, they'll just usher you in. Like, well, welcome to the club, mate. Yeah, but when I went for mine, they said, have you been in fucking trouble? They've got me file on front. That fucking Les Potts, you shit house, Les. There's a picture of me when I had a flat top, you know, last time I had a bit of air. But what's going on yeah. here? Have you been in trouble? Well, yeah, what for? Well, not for not worth bragging about. I'm like, oh, God, what's this? What's this? You know, it's easy. To, you can easily find out anything about anybody nowadays. It's got internet. If you've got internet, put my name in. There's a picture of me getting my teeth smashed out in the back of a police car, isn't it? After a chase. You know what I mean? So it's in daily mail and all sorts, isn't it? And, and obviously there's a picture of me there when I got not guilty on my appeal, but the drink drive still stood, didn't it? They made the drink yeah. drive charge still and the chase and all that bollocks. So you, if you've had a drink, you're not going to stop, are you? I, I, if I've had a drink and I see a blue light, I'll just get my toe down, don't I? But I didn't know they were going to get me in a fucking roadblock five mile away, knock me fucking teeth out in the back of a car. You know what I mean? But uh, it's one of them things, isn't it? But now I think the, the boxing board of control... If you piss them off, they've got a long memory. So I've pissed them off so much now. I've never fucking speak to them ever. I don't like them, do I? I think there were a load of poncers that are poncing off the sport, Terry. That's what I think, don't you? I think the problem is, Russ, everyone's doing that. Hey? Everyone's doing that. Even the boxers. But at least with the boxers, they're putting their, their bodies on the line. So we forgive it. Everyone's just nicking a few quid out of the sport right now. And everyone's trying to get what they can before the bubble bursts. Or even bored. Well, yeah. They, remember, they they got to keep their running costs right and their lifestyles going. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If... They don't even pay tax. 
put nine hundred yeah, thousand pounds last year through his expenses. Didn't pay a bit, didn't pay a penny tax. So are you telling me for that fucking shower on that board, it's cost nearly a million pounds for them to go around fucking country in a year? What are the we trying to spend it on? Let me see. How much have I done on expenses in a year? Well, Rico had it all on his computer, didn't he? He read it all out. I'm sure I've done... I don't think I've done 900 grand in expenses as a team. an audit one, nearly a million pounds. The Board of Control spent nearly a million pounds on expenses. For fucking what? Why can't they do it for love of sport? Because they're not there on them. Them, eat, them when they're strutting about in them fucking shite suits that they wear, like at these shows, when they're strutting about, they're not fucking doing that for free. Let me tell you, they take the partners to these conventions, and don't forget there's WBC, WBA, IBF, IBO, WBO. There's all them conventions. There's EBU. There's there's other ones as well. All right, so they go all over. They take the partners with them, mate. Free gratis. <laughs> that money could be put into boxing, funding kids. It could be given to all the gyms in the country. They could give them no equipment and stuff like that. But now it's going on them fuckers, and it's wrong. You know what I mean? It's wrong. Off with the fucking heads. That's what it needs. And nobody's doing a thing about it. Nobody. Nobody's even mentioning it. But they all know. You know what I mean? It's wrong, mate. So, 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 so wrong. You know what I mean? That's what I think, anyway. I bet none of them have put their hand in the fucking pocket and give Scott Westgarth's family any money. None of them. Fucking none of them. But I bet they took the wages on night when it happened. You know what I mean? Would even provide insurance for their license holders. You are. Do the board even provide insurance for their license holders? I don't know. When you're a promoter, they take 10 grand off you, don't they? It goes into an account or something, doesn't it? And when you're packing, don't you get that back or something? You know, if you want to be a promoter. Yeah. Take that's, a deposit. Yeah, that's that's supposed to be there in case there's... Is it a death or is it a serious injury on the night of a show? I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand it all because they fucking hear that many different stories. But... Listen, they're not doing the jobs, are they? Boxing's in a mess in this country, isn't it? When you've got grafters like Steffi Ball. Let me tell you, he's a grafter and he's on shot four. And Ryan's a grafter as well, Ryan Rhodes. When they're putting shows on with free fights, free kids who've not had a loss, and free opponents who've not had a win, when that's getting passed as a show, fucking hellfire, there's problems. It's coming home to roost. You know what I mean, it makes Dennis's shows look like things Adam used to put on in the 80s. Doesn't it? Dennis's car park show. I read he earned shows any better than Dennis's and Brick Tops. Fucking not that much better, are they? No. Fucking on. Do you know what I mean? I'm telling you now, we're scraping barrel, mate, but they're all they're all just doing enough just to get by, aren't they? But if the pull plug on them and said, no, we're not passing that, they'd up the games, wouldn't they? That's why it needs a new governing body to come in and say, right, what are you serving up? Shite. <laughs> Shite. Let's have better, let's have better fights on. And let, let's govern the sport better and get behind it instead of everybody trying to feather the nest. Look, you know when people get into amateur, you know when you go to amateur yeah. gyms, coaches work for free, don't they, like you? Yeah. Other people, right? They do it because they love the sport, don't they? But then once they cross over to a professional, comes about money, doesn't it? Do they ever forget why they got in the sport? But but also remember, Russ, right? It costs money to have a gym open. Do you know what I mean? It costs I money. I understand that. Look at Chris, Chris's gym up there. They, there's, their rent's astronomical and they, they pay it. Him and Matt pay it. But, and, I, and I bet all memberships more or less just covers it. There's no make any money. In fact, some months they even have to put in. But they love the sport, don't they? They love it. And they don't, Chris don't overlook anybody. You don't see him fucking going to after parties and hanging around with in crowd here in boxing. But he, he doesn't drink it. anyway. He doesn't drink. He's a Tyler in day. And he goes about his business, doesn't he? But you don't see him overhooping anybody, do you? <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
But you don't mean to say that he's not a good trainer, does it? That is a hell of a trainer. Look at adjustments he's made with Mad Max. Mad Max went up there. He had to told their old fucking toes. He couldn't fucking move without tripping up. Now he, he's got a bit, a bit of balance. It might not be enough for him to win Saturday, but you never know, do you? But he's now got a bit of... He's just, Chris has had to strip him back and start again with him. But Who's the to on Saturday? I forget the kid's name. It's an hard name, but there's a bit of beef there. It will be with Max because we've been giving him plenty of stick on social media, Max, because he feels... What a lot of people don't know about this, and this is a true story, checked it out. Max used to play, play professional rugby for all. Professional rugby had a contract, company car and everything. Down here at all. You know that, did you? Mm. Maybe I played against him. I don't know. Well, Max used to play professional rugby. He's a big old lump, isn't he? So maybe... He 18 stone? Max. Oh, about Max is 20 stone. 19, 20 stone. Oof. I think he might be 19. He's lost a bit. I think they flogged him this week. <laughs> but, uh, he'd be all right about 17 stone, but he used to play rugby and they were really good. So obviously he's 33 now, isn't he? But, so he's not a stranger to getting knocked about, is he? And he's game as a pebble. You know what I mean? And you know what it's like yourself when when, when them big guys grab you and they take you down to that floor. It's like a flash, isn't it, Terry? Flash. It's horrible. Thank you. You know what I mean? You've got 19, 20 stone mall and you're in cold. On a you know, the worst the thing about it is you just see it coming. Yeah. Like, there are times you run and you've got the ball in your hands and you're just like, oh, shit. That's yeah. all you can think. You just, that's all you think. So, oh, shit. Mm. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. I'm going to get a shower and I'm going to stick white heat on. And they're all public enemy. I'm going to be torn. I'm going to have to have a thinking shower. What's this here? Oh. Nice. That's Reggie's. I have to game it when I see it. It's not my <laughs> shit like that, Simpsons. That's not for me. I'm a Scooby-Doo man. All right, mate. So, peace right. out. Thanks for coming on the channel. And, I mean, no uh, worries. Uh, have a great week, Terry. Sorry. You too, Paul. Speak to you soon, Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. Well, that was Terry. Nice to have him on. Uh, had a bit of a chat, a bit of, bit of lads banter and told a few stories and spoke a bit of boxing. That's what it's all about, isn't it? All right, keep you hardcore boxing fans happy. This, I'm going to send this off to Cameron now because I can't be asked with all that tagging stuff and fucking thumbnails and all that shit. So I'll send it off to Cameron now. So you'll not get this out today, Tuesday night. Tuesday night, is it? Tuesday night, 8.43. You'll get this tomorrow night with an intro and an ending. All right? And they can do all tags and that because I'm beat. I think this is video number 12 and tomorrow is the 8th. So we're on course to do 30 this month, aren't we? You've already had three members, so this is the ninth YouTube. So 18 videos to go in 24 days. Is it 24 days? Eight? 23 days. So I'm well on course. That's how I like it. All right. Peace out. Hey, Dave Caldwell. I'll get around to you next week. You'll be thinking you've slipped through the net. Because you haven't. You're in my thoughts. I've got a little plan for you, Mr. Fucking YouTube informant. Just to let you know, Dave Caldwell, that these allegations are not going to go away. This is just the beginning. So I think you need to come out and do an interview. I mean, any other time, we can't get you off IFL, behind the gloves, seconds out, boxing, social, fight, height. We can't get you off YouTube. So you need to come out and answer these allegations. You're more than welcome to come on Porky's Corner. You can do it by Zoom. You have to do it in your gym. You can do it by Zoom, and I'll ask you these questions from these lads. All right. And then once you've answered them, then I'm going to play a card that I've got up my sleeve and put this to bed. All right. So come out, come out, wherever you are.
Oops. There you go, Mr. Cordwell. Stop rubbing things out.